What's going on everyone? This is Jacob Amaral here. Today I wanted to talk about trading strategy ideas that I haven't implemented yet, but I wanted to share my ideas with you, maybe inspire you to try testing these strategies, okay? So when I talk about trading strategy ideas, I mean basically different ways to execute trades on the stock market, okay? There's many ways to create a, a strategy you can use technical strategies where you're looking at, you know, the price action or indicators or volume. You can use fundamental analysis, looking at a company's say profit to earnings ratio or revenue or employees, uh, basically any public data found on the stock market. There's uh, news, news based strategies where you look at news from popular from popular uh, news sources like CNBC or CNN, CNN, where you scrape their news and you make trades off of that. There's many ways to do uh, trading and, and investing. And today I'm gonna to be talking about three new strategies that I haven't done yet, I haven't coded yet, but they're ideas and I want you to try them out. So my first idea is buying every day after X amount of candlesticks and selling the next day after those same amount, okay? So what I mean by that is every day when the stock market opens, uh, you can measure the price action with these candlesticks, right? And these uh, candlesticks are usually divided into some type of time frame. Some really popular time frames are one minute, 15 minute, and 60 minute. Now with this strategy, for example, say if you bought after five candlesticks in the morning and then you held on to that stock till the next day and you sold after five candlesticks. Now I see a lot of value in this strategy because I think with solid companies like Apple or Facebook or Netflix, the FANG stocks or any, any company that's well known and pretty successful, this should work because overall and on average, their price goes up over time. So if you can capitalize on those big moves uh, by buying after five candlesticks and selling after five or, or maybe three or two, depending, um, I think you can make some decent profits. Obviously, it's, there's no guarantee. You have to back test it. You have to see the results and implement it in real time to test it out. But I think this simple strategy could work with a lot of stocks. I think it could also look, work really well with futures and options on indexes, such as you know, S&P 500 or Dow Jones, because on average, those prices go up per day. So you might have a couple losers here and there, but you know, if 60, 70, 80% of the time, the index or stock is going up, that buy will win and you know, your wins will be bigger than your losses and hopefully above a 50% win rate. So once again, buying after X amount of candlesticks and selling the next day after X amount of candlesticks. I think this is a great strategy. Uh, try coding it yourself and back testing. Let me know what the results are, but I think it could be good. The second strategy I wanted to talk about was basically using some type of crossover, like a simple moving average crossover or maybe an RSI crossover but only selling when you're at a profit, okay? So say you have a simple moving average crossover where you have a five SMA and a 25 SMA or an, or an RSI crossover where, you know, it hits 30, you buy, which is tech, uh, you know, usually um, underbought or oversold, whatever, is it? Yeah, which is usually, um, usually oversold. And then selling, say at 70 RSI, but only when you're at a profit, right? This ensures that you're always selling for a profit, right? And you have a, hopefully a considerably high win rate. The downside is you could be in positions for quite a long time with a red unrealized. And if you're trading the wrong stocks that aren't good, uh, it could be forever, right? So this strategy I think has a lot of potential, but once again, will only work with um, you know, assets that continuously go up like indexes and really strong companies like Amazon and Apple, I think would work really well. I think there might be times where you might be in a red position for weeks or months, but those would happen so infrequently that the profits you're making on every other scenario would be uh, great, would be amazing. So once again, using some type of crossover, like an SMA crossover or an RSI crossover and selling on the other side of the crossover only when you're at a profit. So with RSI, for example, you buy at 30, you sell at 70, but only if you're at a profit. If you're not at a profit at 70, you just don't sell. I think this is uh, potentially a really great strategy. I would love to see the results on this. I haven't, once again, I haven't used this strategy myself. All these strategies that I'm talking about, I have not developed or back tested, but 
they've been in the back of my mind and I'm interested to hopefully want to develop them one day when I have enough time that they could be good. So that's strategy number two, only selling when you're at a profit. Strategy number three is a gap reversal strategy, which I'm really intrigued about. Basically stocks like to gap after market close in the next day, um, where there is a significant difference in open price and close price from the previous day that you're able to enter that trade and hopefully close that gap and take a profit. For example, say Apple stock uh, closes at $100 the previous day, and then today it opens at $90. There's a $10 gap where if you bought, hopefully it will fill that gap at $100 and you can take that $10 per share profit, okay? Um, I think this has a lot of uh, potential because you have to have some type of filter for the limit of the gap. Like there has, there has to be a minimum gap, but generally where there is, there's quite a bit of volatility and you have a wide range of taking profit for that gap reversal. Now, the major question is when do you take a stop loss? And you know, are you also shorting if it gaps up, right? And that can you know, sometimes be a massive wreck uh, if, you're, if you get short squeezed with some very popular stocks like Tesla, right? So um, there would have to be a filter for the gap uh, on how big the gap should be. And then um, are you shorting and going long or are you just going long? And, and what's the stop loss. So this one is number three for a reason. Uh, I think it has potential, but there's definitely more parameters with this gap strategy. People call it a gap reversal strategy. Um, I think you'll have to have a lot more uh, filters and parameters to make this uh, pretty good, but I see a lot of potential with this. Uh, once again, high quality mid cap and large cap stocks because of the volatility and the wide ranges of those gaps, I think can be um, quite profitable. You would have to trade this probably on multiple stocks because every day there's probably not going to be a massive gap. So um, I would definitely have a list of five to 10 stocks that this uh, is scanning potentially and making trades based on those. Okay. So those are the three strategies that I had for you guys today. Let me know in the comments below if you feel like these strategies can be profitable. Um, once again, I have not coded these strategies. I have not tested them. I'm just, I've thought about them uh, at the back of my head for a long time and I wanted to share them with you guys today in this video, okay? So let me know in the comments below if you think they're profitable. Overall, I think strategy number one has the most potential, the buy after X amount of candle, candles and sell after X amount of candles. I think that has a lot of potential, especially with the indexes. And I think it's gonna be the most profitable of the three, but all overall, they all have a lot of potential. And if you think another one has more potential, let me know in the cons comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found value, please hit the like and subscribe button and stay tuned for next week's video. See you guys.